Hello, I'm Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT. Dominate the GMAT is a leading provider of on-demand video-based test preparation for the GMAT to help students get into business school. What you're about to see is a segment from a full lesson from one of our courses. If you like what you see, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for not only this full lesson, but other course offerings as well. For now, enjoy your free session. And with that, let's turn our attention and do one more example that I think will bring all of what you've learned about triangles together. So take a look at this example. This example reads, what is the area of parallelogram ABCD if the length of side BC is four units long and CD is two units long? And then you have your answer choices. Go ahead and press pause, see how you do, and then we'll do this together. How'd you do with this one? Technically, is it a triangle question? Yeah, well, it says parallelogram, right? We're dealing with a parallelogram, and yet hopefully you saw where triangles come into play. Remember I said that triangles are really the most tested geometric figure, not only just straight out, but also sometimes in the context of other figures. And we see that here, where in order to find the area of this parallelogram, we're going to need to work with triangles uh, somehow. And so hopefully you saw that. If not, pay attention. But what else could we have done? Of course, you can always use the non-standard technique. You can approximate if necessary. A couple things to say about parallelograms in case you were a little bit confused. Uh, well, first things first, what do we do? We always write in the information given to us in the problem. And so to start off, we're told that BC is 4. I'm going to write that in. CD is 2. And hopefully my figure is drawn to scale well enough that if you were forced to, to approximate, you could do that. Parallelograms. What that means is obviously that the opposite sides are parallel. It's basically like a rectangle that's just kind of been tipped on its side, right? So that that side is parallel with that side. And by the way, is the exact same length. So we can write in that that's also 4. That means that those two sides are also not only parallel but equal. That means that is 2 as well. And of course the angles opposite each other within the parallelogram would be congruent or equal. So if that's 45 degrees, that's 45 degrees, right? All right, so there we go. Just a few rules about parallelograms for you. And then now we're asked to find the, the area. And what's the area of really any quadrilateral? The area of any quadrilateral, again, and what do we always want to do? Start with the question. The question says, what is the area? Well, I look at that and I say, okay, if I'm going to find the area, what do I need? I need base times height. So I need the base and I need the height. Very simple, right? And that's really going to be the formula for all quadrilaterals, including trapezoids, by the way. Trapezoids act a little bit differently. Check out my blog for some rules about trapezoids and a way to think about what the area formula for a trapezoid is. But here it's very straightforward, base times height. Now for a rectangle, it would be very easy, right? Base times height is just kind of the bottom and the side, and it's already 90 degrees. With a parallelogram, what do we have to do? Drop an altitude. Just like we saw in the last example with the equilateral triangle, we got to drop that altitude down. That now becomes the height, as we've seen, and we're going to have to calculate that. That's the only bit that makes this problem a little bit difficult, is we have to calculate that, right? And how do we calculate that? Well, hopefully you saw, that creates a situation where we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. How do we know that? Well, because when we drop an altitude, we have 90, 45 degrees is accounted for, and that le if, the, if the angles of a triangle sum to 180, that means there's only 45 degrees left. So there we go, 45 degrees, 45, 45, 90, and we're supposed to solve for that altitude. How do we do it? Our template, right? And again, if you wanted to hold a piece of paper up to the computer screen, you have a bunch of frames of reference. You've got a side that's length 2. You can kind of mark that on your scratch paper, hold it up to your computer screen. You could also use 4, and you could hold it up and say, OK, what then must that be approximately? Compare that to the answer choices. You can get a right answer. Well, let me just continue to show you how to do this mathematically. And hopefully you remember, what does our template say? Remember our good old template, 1, 1, root 2? Well, in this case, our template's kind of reversed 180 degrees, but, but that's OK. Um, we can still find it, right? Because we recognize that AB is the hypotenuse. How do we work backwards from the hypotenuse to a leg? Divide by root 2. 
And so that height, which is one of the legs, is simply the hypotenuse 2 divided by the square root of 2. If you need to revisit the what is x game on 45, 45, 90 triangles, go ahead and do that. This is an example where the GMAT wasn't necessarily nice to us, right? Because the hypotenuse is a solid number. It doesn't already have that root 2 kind of attached to it that we can just lop off. Remember we said we don't really lop anything off anyway. We divide it out, which is how we go from hypotenuse to leg. And here that's what we do. But of course we also don't like the square root of 2 in the denominator, do we? So uh, we multiply by root 2 over 2. And what that ends up being is 2 root 2 over 2. Well, those 2's cancel, so really the leg of this thing is just the square root of 2. I hope that makes sense. Hopefully you got that. And then when we look back down, what did we already decide before we even launched into this problem? We decided we were going to need the base and the height. When the base is easy, because it's already given to us as plain as day in the problem, it's 4. And now we've done the hard work of solving for the height, which is the square root of 2. And with that, we know that base times height is 4 root 2. And what do we do? We look over the answer choices. Ah, uh, look at that. Answer choice B. Again, if you had approximated, if you didn't remember how to do this and you had to eyeball, you would also get answer choice B based on our approximations, knowing that the square root of 2 is about 1.4. So, nevertheless, hopefully that helps. Lots of application. Hello again. Hopefully you found the information in that segment helpful. If you did, just imagine how much you would learn in the full lesson, or better yet, the full course. If you like what you saw, check out www.dominatethegmat.com for our full course offerings. So thanks for watching, and go out and dominate the GMAT.